Hey guys, it's DataVids. Today we're going to be creating a new project. It's going to be .NET 5 and we're going to be using Microsoft Identity, but the database is going to be MySQL or MariaDB. Make sure you have Workbench installed so you could follow along with the database portions of this and Visual Studio 2019, of course. Don't forget to subscribe if you like it. And one last note before we get started is if you're if you have an existing project and you want to add identity to it to have users log in, just make sure that you go ahead and have Microsoft.ASP.NET-Core.Identity NuGet package added to your project. Let's begin. Create a new project and choose ASP.NET Core Web App. I like to choose MVC. Go ahead and give it a name. Next up, obviously pick your framework, five or six. Authentication type, you're going to choose individual accounts. Go ahead and hit create. Time to open the NuGet package manager. You can either right click on your solution or on your project and go to manage NuGet packages. Go to the browse tab and we're going to search for Pomelo. That's going to be pomelo.entityframeworkcore.mysql and select that. Now, if you're working in .NET, six, then you're going to choose the latest version, which at the time of this video is 600. However, if you're like me and you're building this application in .NET 5, then just choose the latest 5 dot version, in my case 503, and click install. Accept the terms. And if you go down to your output window, you can verify that it's successfully installed along with all the packages that are dependent that it is dependent upon open app settings.json you'll see in there that there's already set a default connection string it's going to be for sql server if you were to go ahead and run this it's going to try to connect to sql server and build you your identity database there go ahead and change that out to be a mysql connection string here's an example of mysql connection string this is the one that i'm using to connect to mariadb which is a branch off of MySQL. It's it's similar code, similar application. MySQL is going to be the same way, just in my case, I'm using MariaDB. So server equal server name, user equal username, password equal the password, database equal the database name. And you might consider later on moving your connection string somewhere other than app settings.js. Open startup.cs and scroll down to the configure services method. You'll see inside this method, there's add DB context, and it goes out and chooses the option of SQL Server. Use SQL Server. We're going to go just like that, but instead of using SQL Server, you guessed it, we're going to use MySQL. We can still get the connection string from app settings.json. We didn't change the name of that, but we're going to add a second parameter to specify the database version number. In your case, it may work just fine to have it automatically selected, but I have found oftentimes it does help to select the version number. So we're going to do right here, we can specify new MySQL server version. And in there, we're going to do new version. And here you have to know the version of your database. So if you have Workbench installed, you can connect to your database, whether it's MariaDB or MySQL, and execute this command. It'll be the same for both. Select at sign at sign version, and that should give you the answer. In my case, it's 10.4.12. You might have a much newer one. So just specify the versions use it with the comma separating instead of the points. So 10, comma 4, comma 12 major minor build is what that really means and then make sure all your parentheses have been closed open up the data folder in your solution explorer and take a look inside migrations if you look at the files inside of here you'll notice that these are actually set up with sql server types and they're intended to build your sql server identity database so go ahead and delete that migrations folder by right clicking on it and choosing delete all right, it's time to do that migration to recreate those files. So if we go on ahead and go up to our package manager console, and you can access that by tools, 
and then going to NuGet Package Manager, Package Manager Console. You could do add dash migration and then call it whatever you want. Usually people call the first migration the initial create or the initial migration. So I'll just call it initial. All right, as you can see, the file's been created over here in the right hand side. Now back in the package manager console, we're going to do update database and that command might be actually familiar to you just like the create migration was because these are the same commands that you use for SQL Server when you're dealing with migrations. There's nothing fancy. We just change the connection string and we replace the files, right? Update dash database. Looks good. Um, if you get this kind of message, you might need to update your tools. Just go over to your NuGet package sources and turn off any NuGet package, external NuGet package sources just temporarily because the fix to this command, for whatever reason, sometimes will give you uh, an error if you have a bunch of external package sources. You can always turn them back on later. Go to your command line. And you're going to type .NET space tools space update space dash dash global space .NET dash EF. That's going to update your .NET tools. Anyways, so after updating your database, doing the update database, if you come back to your workbench and you right click on your schemas and you refresh all, a whole bunch of new tables should show up. There should be all the tables that you'd expect to see in SQL Server for identity. You also have your EF migrations history and if you select that one it should show the initial migration that you just did. That's it folks go back to Visual Studio run your project register a new user account and then log in. It's going to prompt you right away with some ideas about setting up an email system in order for this identity to work to let the users know that hey your account needs to be authenticated enter your code and such such forth. There's lots of ways of doing that. If you're interested, let me know. I'll make a video on it. Um, SendGrid seems to be really popular with Azure, but there are other ways. Um, there's lots of customization that you can do, but once you've registered a user, pop back into MySQL, and you should see your account created there, and everything should be working.